morning and welcome to worship this morning. It's uh, good to see you uh, here. Uh, welcome any guests we might have, and uh, glad that you're here, and I uh, hope you come back. Uh, we have yellow, um, what we call connection cards in the pews, and we like all of uh, everyone that's here to fill those out, and you can drop those in the offering plate when that comes by a little bit uh, later in the service. Just a few things to um, call to your attention. The budget hearing is tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. There's a Zoom link in the Just Three Things email. Uh, you can uh, join that in that way. And Heather will also be in the dining room um, with her computer. And so if you don't have internet and you still want to participate in that hearing, uh, you can join Heather in the dining room uh, also at uh, 6 o'clock at the same time. Um, just a quick update on our stewardship campaign. Uh, we've, we've had a, a good response. Uh, we've had a, just a, maybe a few fewer cards that came in, but our total in, in, in estimated giving was up by about $12,000. So that's the good news. Um, if you didn't turn your card in yet, um, I'd encourage you to do so, and any indication on that and our, our, our future income uh, for 2023 will be helpful for uh, church leadership, um, especially uh, as we're still in the call process. Um, Advent worship, the third and final in our uh, Advent series, will be this Wednesday night at 6.30. Our uh, theme is Arise and Shine, and Pastor Paul will be bringing the message uh, this week, and his theme will be Healing Light. And then also a reminder that supper will be at 5.30. And then with regard to our picture directory, um, I hope most of you that, that or all of you that did sit for the photos received your, uh, that those of you that have email uh, received those in your, an, an email address from, or uh, <laughs> an email from Heather. Um, but if you don't have uh, email, uh, you, and you would like to order pictures, um, you can meet with me after worship today, or, uh, and then Heather will be there after the 10, uh, uh, 10 o'clock church, or you can call the office and make an appointment with Heather to come in, and she will order any photos that you want that you can go pick up from wherever uh, you choose to do that. So um, we're still working on the other details regarding the directory, but... As far as the photos are concerned, uh, I hope that uh, you'll be able to use the, the pictures that have been taken uh, by uh, Dave and, uh, uh, and get those uh, ready for however you want to use them. So um, I think that's the update on that. Um, we begin our worship with, lighting, with the lighting of the Advent wreath. Praise to you, O God, who holds our joy and sorrow. You bring water to parched ground and life out of death. Bless us as this light grows and sends sorrow and sighing to flee away. Give us strength and patience, trusting that you are true to your promises. Transform the lives of all who suffer with your wonders near at hand. Amen. We sing, light three candles to watch for Messiah. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the parent who rouses us from slumber, the shepherd who gathers us on the holy mountain, the deliverer who sets us free. Amen. Let us come before the living God in confession. As we wait and watch for the promised day of salvation, we open our hearts to you, O God. Search us and know us. Reveal all that we keep inside. To you, O God, we confess our sins, known and unknown. Forgive us, renew us, 
and lead us in your ways of justice and peace. Make us reflections of the radiant love of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved children of the Most High, you are gathered before the righteous judge who has mercy on all. Splash exuberantly in the waters of baptism where sin is washed away in the river of life. Dwell peacefully in the loving arms of the one who nurtures all creation. Go forth boldly in the assurance that your sins are forgiven in the name of the one who is coming and who is already here, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We sing the hymn. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead to bring everlasting hope, be with you all.
Let us pray. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your way. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading this morning is from Isaiah, the 35th chapter, the first through the 10th verses. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless shall sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up upon it. They shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from James, the fifth chapter, the seventh through the tenth verses. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning. So what are the hot items on the top of the toy list for Christmas this year, Riley? Come on, what's the gotta have items? What's top on your list that you really want? The big me meow. A big me meow. She collects these stuffed cats. <laughs> so some, what do, you, what do you think some of your friends want? Some of your friends want the latest iPhone maybe or big tech gadgets? No, you don't, right? <laughs> okay, well, some people do, but what if I told you there were gifts greater than that? Yeah. So remember the man we talked about last week, John the Baptist? Well, he was in prison, and he sent a message to Jesus, and he wanted to ask Jesus if he was the real Messiah or if they should wait for someone else. And this is the reply that Jesus had for John the Baptist. The blind can see, the crippled can walk, diseases are healed, the deaf can hear, the dead are alive, and the good news is told to the poor. These are amazing gifts that Jesus brings. And they're the good gifts and the promises that he himself promises to give us eternal life. 
And that is a greater gift than anything that we can find wrapped under the Christmas tree, right? Will you join me in prayer? And I invite the congregation to join along. Dear God, thank you for we know that every good gift comes from you. And the greatest gift is Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am ascending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least of the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, help us to wait patiently for your coming. We pray this in your name. Amen. A story that was making the rounds several years ago on CBS and social media is about two souls separated by 78 years. Little Nora had just turned four and was at the grocery store with her mom buying cupcakes when she noticed an elderly man who was pushing his shopping cart. Hi, old person. It's my birthday today, little Nora said to the man. The elderly man, whose name is Dan, warmly wished her a happy birthday. Nora then asked for a picture with Dan, and the two chatted as though they were old friends. As Dan took leave of Nora and her mother in the story, Dan said, this has been the best day I've had in a long time. You've made me so happy, Miss Nora. Nora's mom posted the story on Facebook and someone recognized Dan, revealing that he had lost his wife, Mary, earlier in the year and had been lonely ever since. Nora and her mother went to visit Dan at his house, and the little girl drew pictures for her new friend. Dan, in turn, cut her a rose from his garden, which for a long time she kept under her pillow. Nora has helped to heal me, says Dan. The two remain friends, vowing to see each other once a week. A follow-up story told of how Nora's family invited Dan to spend Thanksgiving with them at their house. And a more recent update from 2020. After staying in touch for four years, Mr. Dan died at age 86, having received his last hug from Nora the day before he died. If you want to see for yourself the video reports of this marvelous 
friendship, just go to youtube.com and use the search words Nora and Dan. And those will pop up right away, and you'll be able to see Dan and Nora as they interact. Sometimes a child will do that for us. Sometimes a child can get into a heart that has been locked up tight for years. Sometimes it takes a child to teach us some of the great truths about God. Isn't that what Christmas is all about? That a baby, a child, changes everything. One of the lesser-known Christmas hymns expresses it this way. Holy child within the manger, long ago yet ever near, Come as friend to every stranger. Come as hope for every fear. What are some some more truths about God that a child can teach during this Advent and Christmas season? I'd like to focus on three this morning. The first is communicated by that ancient word, Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Isaiah the prophet predicted it hundreds of years before in our first reading for today. Be strong, do not fear, your God will come. And God did come, and God is still with us. There is a way out of the sinfulness and hopelessness that chips away at the human spirit because we are not alone. The story is told of a little girl who was hospitalized during the Christmas season. As the days passed and test results were collected, it became obvious that she would not be able to be home on Christmas. Her parents were quite well-to-do and showered her with expensive gifts in an attempt to get her to feel better. They gave her big overstuffed animals, dolls, games of every kind. Her her hospital room was transformed into a miniature toy store. Every time her parents came to the hospital, they brought another present. But they were never able to stay long because they had a heavy social schedule, especially during the Christmas season. One day, the little girl was particularly unhappy and held desperately onto her mother as the mother gave her a kiss and a hug before leaving for her next engagement. The mother tried to interest her in the newest toy she had brought. And through her tears, the little girl cried, Mommy, I I just want you. Doesn't that express our greatest need? We want God. We want to know that God lives and that God cares and that God is with us. In 1930, playwright Mark Connolly wrote his Pulitzer Prize winning book, Green Pastures, which portrays episodes from the Old Testament as seen through the eyes of a young African-American child in the Depression-era South. In one of the episodes, the angel Gabriel walks on stage with his horn under his arm and approaches the Lord, who is deep in thought. God is troubled about what is happening among the people on earth, troubled because God sent prophets and messengers, but the people refuse to listen to them. Gabriel offers to blow his horn, the final trumpet, and end the whole thing. But the Lord takes the trumpet away from Gabriel and says, I'm not going to send anybody this time. I am going myself. And that's the first piece of good news about Advent and Christmas that comes by way of a child. God did not remain in heaven. God could have formed and delegated a committee to help us work on our problems, but no. We say it this way in the Nicene Creed. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. In other words, God came to us as a child. A second truth about Advent and Christmas that one can learn from a child is this. God speaks to us in the most unthinkable places and through the most unlikely people. Certainly John the Baptist, who we focused on last Sunday, and who also gets some time in today's gospel reading, 
was a most unlikely person, the most unlikely person to prepare the way for Jesus. It's not surprising that Jesus said this to the crowd, which Matthew records in the 11th chapter of his gospel. What did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? If that's what the crowd went out to see, they were in for a shock because they didn't get it with John. Then Jesus answered his own question, a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. God speaks to us in strange ways and through unlikely people. And again, we are reminded that God often uses children to teach us. A story about children and one child in particular first appeared in Reader's Digest in 1966, the truth and the details of which cannot be either denied or confirmed. One of those kind of stories. Well, be that as it may, the story is of a small church that each year put on the traditional nativity pageant. In that church, there was a lively 10-year-old boy who had managed to create a disaster in every Christmas play he had been in. The boy's name was Barry. One year, his angel wings got too close to a lighted candle, and only quick action with a fire extinguisher averted a conflagration. The next year, as Herod the Great, when he heard from the wise men about a child who had been born king of the Jews, he, he jumped up from his throne, bumped into the wise men, and down they went like dominoes. The next year, as the Sunday school leaders and the children were planning for that year's program, one teacher reported that two of the Sunday school children came up to her and asked, Please, Mrs. Jones, can't we just leave Barry out this year? But the teacher didn't have the heart to exclude Barry, even if he were a little clumsy and prone to accidents. She was able to convince the children that Barry could not do any real damage by playing the innkeeper of Bethlehem. He just opened and closed the door and spoke one short line. Well, Barry made it perfect through all the rehearsals and the dress rehearsal. Then on the night of the Christmas program, Barry had his chance to redeem himself with a flawless performance. He opened the door of the inn and looked straight into the face of Mary and Joseph and said his line with professional emphasis and timing, Be gone! I have not room for the likes of you. Mary and Joseph turned sadly away into the cold night, but Barry was still standing at the open door of his inn. And those who were in the front row saw tears well up in the eyes and his lips tremble. Wait! But that word was not in the script of the familiar Christmas story. Then Barry finished what he wanted to say. Wait! You can have my room! And then the program pretty much fell apart. Children cried, parents were angry. Barry had ruined another Christmas play. But then the director of the play quieted the crowd, dried Barry's tears as well as her own, and said, maybe Barry was the real messenger after all. Only for those who have room in their hearts can the dear Christ child enter in. God comes to us in unexpected places and speaks through unexpected people. Sometimes we can be so busy preparing for and celebrating Christmas that we fail to hear the voice of the one who spoke that first Christmas into existence. I came across a prayer that expressed this very thought. And the prayer goes like this. Lord, grant that when Christmas breaks for us this year, we may have something more to show for our much running around and tired feet, unwrapped presents, and regrets for cards not sent. If that is to happen, you and I will have to look for God in unexpected places and hear God speak through unexpected people. But there's one more thing about this Advent and Christmas season that a child can teach us. The Christmas story is as yet unfinished. We cannot take the Christmas story and isolate it from the rest of God's activity in human history. Advent and Christmas are part of an unfolding drama, a drama in which God is seeking nothing less than the redemption of God's creation. 
Isaiah describes it like this in today's first lesson. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame shall leap like a deer, the tongue of the speechless shout for joy, a highway will be there, and it shall be called the holy way. Much of that prophecy is yet to be fulfilled, but it will happen. As James says today in today's second reading, be patient until the Lord's coming. The story of Christmas is as yet unfinished. Several years ago, a short 15-minute movie entitled Many Worlds was released. This movie is like a choose-your-own-adventure story, but instead of making a conscious decision about which page and ending to turn to, the film automatically edits itself in real time as the audience watches based on sensors that measure things like muscle tensions and heart rate. The film changes on how the audience is physically reacting to it and can therefore end in one of four ways. And so the audience helps determine how the story ends. There is a sense in which the Christmas story is like that. You choose the ending to it that you want. You can keep it fenced in by Thanksgiving and New Year's and keep the baby of Bethlehem in the cradle forever, or you can let him grow up and call you to follow him. In the baby of Bethlehem, God has made the first move. In our baptism, God has chosen us and made us God's child. But each of us will choose how we will finish the Christmas story in our own lives. And that is where we stand on this third Sunday of Advent. Will we shout with Barry, wait, you can have my room? Or will we simply be observers? who keep the child in the manger where we can visit him once a year. A little boy was working hard on a drawing, and his dad asked him what he was doing. The reply came back, drawing a picture of God. The dad said, you can't do that, son. Nobody knows what God looks like. But the little boy was undeterred and continued to draw. He looked at his picture with satisfaction and said very matter-of-factly, they will in a few minutes. In a few short days, we will know what God looks like. We will know that God has become Emmanuel, God with us. We will know that God comes to us in the strangest places and through the most unexpected people. But the Christmas story is as yet unfinished. How it is finished in our lives is up to us. May we be able to pray the prayer penned by Charles Wesley in the Advent hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, which goes like this. By thine own eternal spirit, Rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. And that is a prayer. And, of course, all of our prayers end with that most important word. Amen. We sing the hymn.
We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the ELCA Global Mission. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice and racism and oppression. Deliver all who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted. Reconcile nations and peoples in conflict, especially we remember the Ukraine. Help us pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry illness or loss. We especially lift up Dan, Donna, Jenny, Jan, Nancy, Richard, as well as those that we name in our hearts. Strengthen and protect health care workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those for whom this season is not happy. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, mother of our Lord, and with all the saints that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have died and lead us to joyfully sing of your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. You may be seated. We will now receive the offering. And would you please make sure that you have filled out that yellow welcome card and place it in the offering plate as it goes by.
Let us pray. Giver of every good thing, we set before you the gifts that you have already given to sustain our lives and to share with others. Help us to be good stewards of the earth and all that is in it, and let our lives be a testimony to the abundant feast you prepare for all who hunger. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you for the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. But remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come now with joy to Emmanuel's table. Feast at the banquet of hope and love. You may be seated. And if there are any of you who are receiving the prepared elements in the pews, I would invite you to make them ready at this time. And when you have done so, take and eat the body of Christ, take and drink the blood of Christ.
Let us pray. God of abundance, we give you thanks that in this holy meal you have invited us to feast with you and one another. May the taste of your love remain with us, and may our words and our work in your name invite others into your bountiful grace. Send us from your table to proclaim your presence, even as we await the glorious coming of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God who gathers us in love lead you in pathways of righteousness and justice. May God, who knows us more deeply than we know ourselves, lead you in pathways of forgiveness and freedom. May God, who fills us with good things, lead you in pathways of equity and abundance. The blessings of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. We sing the hymn. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.